the GOAT, and Mr. Irrelevant. That's our quarterback matchup for Super Bowl 58. And today, we're going to give you the latest news and rumors and a little bit of a preview for Super Bowl 58. But it's not going to be me who talks the preview. It's going to be the players. We've got interviews. We've got video clips. We've got everything from Super Bowl media days. And it's these players talking about their opponent ahead. We have it all right here on the Chiefs Report. On the Chiefs Report and it's exclusively here. You're not going to find this content anywhere else on YouTube. Nowhere. So you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button. We're also going to be live for the Super Bowl here this upcoming Sunday. We're going to be live two hours before game time. So 3.30 p.m. Central time. We'll be live. So hit that sub button so make sure you can join us here. It's going to be me. It's going to be Sam. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have super chat giveaways. We're going to have fun time. Ronald's going to throw in there. It's going to have Jan Rockefeller hanging out with us. We're going to have a ton of fun people and amazing time. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and joining us because we're going to have play-by-play -play updates all you could want for Super Bowl 58. All right, let's talk about the Chiefs opponent, the 49ers coming in here in what is a rematch of Super Bowl 54. Now, obviously, these two teams a lot different. Uh, the one difference for the Niners that's not on the Chiefs is the quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo is no longer the quarterback in the Niners. It's Brock Purdy, and that's where the offense starts, that's where the offense ends. And ultimately, there's a lot of talk about if Brock Purdy is a game manager if he is a game changer, if he is actually good, if it's Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Jawan Jennings, and all the weapons they have, and that's what makes Brock Purdy so good. Well, here's the thing. I think it's a combination. I think Brock Purdy is good. I think the weapons help. But ultimately, you've got to treat this guy like a top-two quarterback, and guess what? That's what the Chiefs defense is doing. Drew Tranquil talked about Brock Purdy in his most recent interview yesterday. I know Steve said all you have to do, turn on the tape. Brock Purdy is not a game manager. He's a game changer. What's kind of stood out to you about Brock Purdy and what he's been able to do in his first full season as a starter? Yeah, it's wild. He's only in year two. I don't know how he got the idea or the tag game manager. Um, you look last week, he just finds ways to win. Um, I think if you look at his record, he's probably off to one of the hardest, hottest starts any quarterback's ever gotten to off to in the National Football League. Uh, he, he finds ways to win, whether it's with his arms. You look last week, I think he had 54 yards on the ground and extending plays. Um, he's a really, really good quarterback. He's going to be a challenge. He might not have a bazooka like Patrick Mahomes, but what are the difficulties with having to cover against a quarterback who has touch and accuracy to throw at that second and third level like him? Well, he's got a great arm as well. He can, he can throw the ball outside. He can throw it deep. He can throw it over the middle. Um, I think of that third down, it might have been first down, but he rolled out and uh, threw the use check on the sideline and kind of toe tapped it. Um, but throwing across, across his body at different arm angles, uh, he's very talented as well. Thanks, sure. I think the way Tranquil spoke about Brock Purdy is perfectly right. He has a ton of talent and he knows what he's doing with the football. But again, if you can treat Brock Purdy like a top five quarterback in the NFL, then you play like that. This Chiefs defense can make him look like a bottom five quarterback in the NFL. We saw that with Lamar Jackson. Not that he had a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, but still, they limited him to what is really his worst game of the season. That's the MVP of the National Football League that they limited to his worst game in the playoffs in a critical situation. Overall, I think if the Chiefs defense goes in here with that same mindset Tranquil talked about of, listen, we have to respect him. You have to go in there and kind of talk about how good this guy's done. He's a second-year guy, and he's playing this well. Treat him like a top-five quarterback, then maybe you can make him look like a bottom-five quarterback. I do want to go back to the point, though, that Brock Purdy is great, but I still think that the weapons are going to be key. And stopping those are going to be important for the defense, and I think that's going to start really up front. Obviously, protection is key, so if you can make Brock Purdy go a little bit out of the pocket, it's going to help. But McCaffrey. He's one of those running backs where he's going to go the outside, he's going to go inside, he's going to run all over the place, and you also have Debo Samuel. This defensive line is going to have to set the tone early and often, and George Carl Loftus, who is a key member, especially with Charles Somini, who out, talked about what this weapons do and the challenges it present to the Chiefs defense. When you, when you face an elite offense like that, every single person has got to focus on their one level, doing their, doing their responsibility with whatever Coach Max calls, and everything else will take care of itself. He said it perfectly. The weapons he has around him is really, really key. Now, obviously, that's the part to a substantial offense. You're going to have a lot of weapons. I mean, in some ways, 
people talk about the way Patrick Mahomes has played, and, you know, early in his career, it was, oh, it was because of Tyreek Hill, it was because of this. He's proven that all wrong. Won a Super Bowl without Tyreek, and now it's this year, and he has just had no wide receivers until Rasheed Rice, really until week eight or nine, when he finally got the freedom that he has been given for the rest of the season. It's just one of those things that we haven't seen Brock Purdy without those weapons. That's obviously going to play a key role in the Super Bowl, but I think that's also why the talk of is he a game manager or is he a game changer type will come into question. We'll all see it, though, on Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm kind of interested to see. The Chiefs' defense has been impressive this season, to say the least. I ask this question. Will the 49ers score more than 21 points in Super Bowl 58? Just want to give some backstory on this. Uh, they have scored 20 points against the Chiefs in Super Bowl 50. That was with Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously. And then in this postseason, seven points against the Ravens, who were a really, really good offense. And the Dolphins held them under 21 as well. So I'm curious to see what you think. Will the 49ers score more than 21 points in Super Bowl 58? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I hope to see a lot of ends in the chat. I will say this, if they do score that, well, they just go watch them go score or not score, and you can get $100 off the big game ticket by going to Game Time and using code VEGAS100. It's a special deal that Game Time's promoting, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of things you could do with an extra 100 bucks in your pocket in Vegas. You can put it all on red. You can give yourself a good dinner. There's a lot of things you could do with that extra 100 bucks. Now, Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets, not just for sports, but they've got music, they've got comedy, and they've got theater events. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat, their best price guarantee. Make sure that they take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Again, you can get $100 off the big game ticket by using code VEGAS100. But if you're not looking for that, you still want to get some money off, well, guess what? Right now you go in, you put Chiefs Chat into the Redeem Code section after downloading the app and creating an account. You're going to get $20 off your first purchase. Why not use it on the Royals? Exciting young team. Bobby Witt Jr. gets the big contract. Kauffman Stadium's a beautiful park. And I'm telling you, baseball, it's America's pastime, or at least that's what everybody calls it. So why don't you go check it out? Opening day against the Minnesota Twins is right around the corner, and you can use code CHEESECHAT to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, you can also get $100 off the big game ticket by using code VEGAS100. And again, $100 is a lot of money in Vegas. In some ways, you could maybe make that into $1,000 just by using that $100. Now, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. And like I said, right now, all Game Time users can get that $100 off the big game ticket with code VEGAS100. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use code VEGAS100 for $100 off a big game ticket. Or if you're not going to the game, that's fine. We still got a code Chiefs Chat, C H I E F S C H A T, for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. All right, stopping this offense is going to be key, and I think the real, I guess, mantra to this whole 49ers team is their versatility and the way that they have a top-tier fullback. They have a top-tier wide receiver. They have a top-tier running back. They have a top-tier offensive line. They just can hurt you in so many different ways, and they know that. I mean, Kyle Juszczyk talked about it yesterday that this team is really versatile that the Chiefs are going to have to go up against. In order to be, I feel like, truly the best at your position, it's about being able to play your position at a very high level, but also being able to play other positions at a very high level. And I think his ability to catch the ball, to legitimately, he's played wide receiver on third downs. Um, I think that is what makes him so difficult to defend. And same with uh, all the other skilled players on our team, you know, with Debo being able to play running back, um, with me being able to play tight end, with George being able to play fullback or receiver, all that sort of stuff. I think that's what makes guys truly the best of their positions. Now, you kind of heard it in the way he conveyed that in his tone, but overall, the team that the Niners have put together, well, they have confidence in themselves. They know that they're going to have each other's back, and it's not just a offensive minor team. It's not the versatility of the offense. It's the versatility of the entire team. And Juszczyk kind of talked about how this team has really just all come together, including some trades. I mean, they traded for Chase Young, who effort or no effort is still one of the top defensive linemen in the National Football League when he wants to be. And he even knows. I mean, he's been around Brock Purdy for less than an entire season, and yet he still knows that Purdy is a pretty good quarterback. And as much as people want to sit here and say, oh, it's because of his weapons, you still have to give credit where credit is due. And while Chase Young talks about his quarterback and really how much he can 
changed the game, to be honest. What do you appreciate about Brock's competitive spirit and being a leader on this team? Yeah, man, Brock, I mean, Brock, he's just a great guy. Um, I think the nicest guy in our locker room has to be um, a man of faith. Uh, he walks around proud, um, confident at all times. Um, I feel like he's the best in the league, man. Uh, you know, definitely glad to have a leader like that. Um, you know, to come in the locker room and just, uh, you know, watch how he carries himself every day. Um, you know, it's QB1 for sure. Now, Chase Young, obviously the confidence is key. He trusts in Brock Purdy, and he said a lot of positive things about him. But I think both teams also know that there are challenges in this game. There's going to be challenges to facing a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes. And Mahomes is not like Brock Purdy. He's the GOAT. He's proven he's been here multiple times. He's calm, collective. Not that Brock Purdy isn't, but it's just a different vibe. I've seen it a lot. What if Brock Purdy cracks under the lights? We could have seen that at a lot of different times. I don't know if that will happen, but I still think that there is a difference in Brock Purdy and the way the Chiefs defense is having to prepare for him and Patrick Mahomes and how the Niners defense is having to prepare for him. Now, Chase Young obviously talked about Purdy, but he also talked about Mahomes in a positive light and kind of what exactly he sees from what, in my opinion, will be the GOAT QB. Um, you know, year in and year out, uh, he, he always ends yes. up at this game um, and for a reason. Um, that's how those guys execute and uh, handle business. So, uh, you know, all praise to uh, you know, Patrick. Um, you know, we're going to do our best to stop him. Obviously a little smaller of a quote there because, well, you're talking about your opponent. You're trying to kind of dim it down in some way. So talk a lot about Purdy, talk a little bit less about your opponent. I do have this question, though, as the challenges are there. What's Mahomes going to play like in Super Bowl 58 against a very talented 49ers defense? I mean, you've got guys like Chase Young. You've got guys like Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Greenlaw, Eric Armstead. There's just so much to kind of go around on this team that I almost think, like, Mahomes is going to play well because he is up for the challenge. I, we've seen it all year when the Brights – when the bright lights turn on, Mahomes gets better, which we'll see if that's the case for Brock Purdy. But I want you to go down in the comment section and predict Mahomes' stat line for Super Bowl 58 against the San Francisco 49ers. By the way, make sure you hit that sub button because we got more exclusive interviews all week long. We're going to have another live show tomorrow. And I'm telling you, it's not just the offense we're going to talk about. We've got to talk about the Chiefs' defense and really give them credit to, honestly, getting the Chiefs here. I think we know that. They are the reason the Chiefs have gotten the Super Bowl. And defense wins championships. I think this is true in this one. You've never faced an offense like this one, though, with so many weapons. You could talk about the Ravens. They have Flowers. They have Mark Andrews, though it was his first game back. They have Lamar. But I don't think there's a single team in the National Football League that has the number one running back, that has a top five wide receiver. And the wide receiver, two, I would say, is the best wide receiver, two in the National Football League, whoever that may be. I don't know if it's Debo. I don't know if it's IU. They're both really good. George Kittle's a top five tight end. And Brock Purdy, like it or not, his stats show him as a top five quarterback. The offensive line is great. Everything on this team is really good. And so it's really going to be key to stop the big chunk plays. And the defense has done really well about this all year. But again, this is a different team. And so I think that with Justin Reed and kind of, I'm not going to say the helm of the defense, but really the, kind of the veteran, the safety area. You got Shamari Connor, obviously Brian Cook and Mike Edwards, who just came out of the Chiefs this year. I'm curious to see what Justin Reed has to say about how basically this Chiefs team really kind of dials in to stop the big plays, which they did against the Ravens with just that one Zay Flowers catch that ended up being a taunting penalty. Justin Reed was asked about this. Here's what he said. Confidence in yourself when your number is called. Confidence in the system to just go out and execute and believe it. Um, confidence in your teammates that when they're supposed to have your back in the coverage, that they're going to be there to have your back so that you can go out and execute your responsibility better. Uh, Chamari's been great for us all season, special young talent. Um, and Beach just, just does such a great job finding these guys, man, because they come in and they make big plays for us when we need them. About that young secondary, because last year it was Joshua Williams, it was Jalen Watson, it was obviously Trent McDuffie. Now you got Chamari, Brian Cook started to come into his own as well. What is it about? The, I don't know if it's the scouting, the coaching, what it is to be able to unearth that young talent. In the uh, it's a little bit of all of the above. It's the scouting to find the talent, first and foremost, find the right guys for the locker room, guys that are going to buy into the system, that are humble, um, hard workers, willing tacklers, uh, and can pick up the, the playbook. And then secondly, it's just um, the system, the culture that we build here, 
that we trust in each other and you know we have believed that when we're on that field that uh, as long as we have each other's back man we can go out and accomplish anything that we put our minds to uh, so anytime Chamari is on the field I have the utmost confidence that he's going to go out and make every play that is presented in front of him. The confidence Justin Reed has. I want that. Shout out to Sam, by the way, for the awesome question. Justin getting a really good answer. And overall, that just kind of gets me pumped for this game because they know this is a good matchup. They know it's going to be a tough game, but that's exactly why it's the Super Bowl. You're not going to ask for anything less than a good matchup. Now, if you can't wait for Super Bowl Sunday, it's Wednesday now if you're watching it on Wednesday. Whatever it is, we're close. We're within a week. So go down there, hit that like button because I am super, super pumped. I cannot wait for Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to be live right here on the Chiefs Sport, 3.30 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you're joining us. You can do that by hitting that subscribe button, and that way you're going to get a little bit of an easier path to our channel. On top of which, you hit the bell. You're going to get notified 30 minutes before we go live. But for now, if you're excited, hit that like button. And as always, Chiefs Kingdom.